Hello? Yeah. What? What happened? Why? Why? What happened? Your dad. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Hi, uh, I'm your father's lawyer. Uh, may I come in? Yes, to me. Thank you. Okay, first of all, uh, Mrs. Lia, Mr. Oman, I am very sorry for your loss. But before he passed away, he has signed to transfer all his will to Mr. Lokman. And he is the sole owner of all his assets. It's okay, Mr. Rajat. I understand it. Plus, Lokman is my beloved son. Even though I'm not the biological mother, but I will love him with all my heart. It's okay, Mr. Rajat. You can have a further discussion with my son, Lokman. I will make a drinks for you. All the will goes to Lokman. Well, I'm the one who get married with him. Then what is this money? <sighs> Never mind. Let's be a good mother. Mom, I'm C. Yeah, I know, darling. Just wait for a while. Come, drink this one first. Slowly, 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 slowly. Okay, now get back to sleep. Mom, yes? I want to go out with my friends. I want one k. Sure, I always prepare some money for you. Have fun and take care, okay? Thank you. Welcome. Happy birthday to my son. Ah. This is the birthday gift that I bought for you. What is this? That is a flight ticket for you. <laughs> Why, Mom? What happened? My son, I have a lot of problems. I have a lot of debt and I don't have money to pay. It's okay, just take my asset. You can pay everything what you want. So I've prepared all the documents that you requested, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, can we have Mr. Lokman? Please sign here. Get out from my house and never show your face again. Never come back and never find me again. According to the facts of the case study of Lokman Karim against Lia Majna, it can be seen that Mr. Lukman was unduly influenced when making the wealth transfer contract to his stepmother, Mrs. Leah. The definition of undue influence under Section 16 Clause 1 in the Contracts Act 1950, it states that a contract is said to be induced by undue influence where the relations subsisting between the parties are such that one of the parties is in a position to dominate the will of the other and uses that position to obtain an unfair advantage over the other. Hence, Mrs. Lia has induced Mr. Lukman in signing the contract as she is in a fiduciary relation to the other as stated in Clause 2A, such that a stepmother to stepson relationship. Referring to case law of Alcott against Skinner, which the plaintiff was a former Protestant sisterhood and gave her property to the value of $7,000 in accordance with her vows. This shows a similar fiduciary relation and domination of will between the plaintiff and the Protestant sisterhood. When she left the protestant sisterhood, she then sued for the property given as the plaintiff was not given independent legal advice, while in the sisterhood resulting the plaintiff to be in a contract voidable. This case is relevant to Lokman's case in which Lokman can bring the contract into a contract voidable when he brings it to court. In addition, according to section 20, when a consent to an agreement is caused by undue influence, the agreement is a contract voidable at the option of the party whose consent was so caused. Hence, Ms. Mr. Lokman can retain all the wealth passed by his late father Karim. Have you ever wondered how it feels like to see the world again? With each drop of Mata Kuku, we 100% guarantee you that you can see the world again. Or if it doesn't work, 1000 ringgit will be in your pocket right away. Use Mata Kuku. Lukman, Lukman, slowly, slowly. I have a good news. I found this product called Mata Kuku in social media. Uh -huh. It says that you use that you can get your eyesight again. Are you sure? Yes, they say it's guaranteed. Can you buy it for me? Sure, I will. Thank you, thank you. Hey Lukman, I got your medication already. Oh, really? Yes, yes, turn to your right. Okay, I'll take off your specs. I'll put it for you, okay? Alright, by tomorrow you'll be fine. You can see the world again, okay? Thank you, Sam. Alright, bye-bye. Thank you so much, bye. Yeah. It's going to be the best day of my life. I'm going
going to see the world again. Here we go. One, two, three. Huh? What happened? What happened? I can't see. What I can't see? What Mata Kuku has done to me? According to the facts of the case study between Lokman Karim and Mata Kuku Ointment, the offer made as according to Section 2 Clause A of the Contracts Act 1950 specifies that when another person signifies to another his willingness to do or to abstain from doing anything with a view to obtaining the assent of that other to the act or abstinence, he is said to make a proposal. When the promisor made the proposal to the general public, the promisee which is Lukman successfully converted it into an agreement by its acceptance as derived from Section 2 Clause A and 2 Clause C. A similar case law was referred that is Khalil against Kabulik Smoke Ball. Kabolik Smokeball Co. Limited advertised that they would offer $1,000 to anyone who still suffer from influenza after using certain remedy for a fixed period. The plaintiff duly used it but still contracted influenza. It was held that the plaintiff was entitled for the money offered as she had accepted the offer made to the world at large when she sued for the money. Lokman properly used it yet his vision still remained unrepaired and he sued for the money. In this manner, the advertisement advertised were not proven effective. Hence, the offer of an amount of cash is valid to be given as they have guaranteed the consumers into purchasing their product. These are necessary justifications in Lokman's case if he were to bring the case to court against Matakoko Oyman Sendian Berhad. Finally, it can be said the contract is valid and that the promisee is still entitled to 1,000 ringgit as he had accepted the offer made to the general public. Raja, yeah. you need a help. I'm in a very bad situation right now. Um, so I'm planning to sell off my car. No, it's okay. I'm planning to sell off my car. Yeah. So um, can you buy my car? Buy your car? Yeah. Cheaper? Um, I need about 20,000 right now. Oh, okay, very cheap. Many one. So you can take my car right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. my keys. No, no, I'm selling my car to you. I'm oh, selling my okay, car. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll buy your car. So, you can take my car today, but can you pay me back? Yeah. Three... I give money tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, great. But tomorrow, don't forget, please. Okay. You're my best friend, so I'm uh, like... Yeah, I don't Okay, bye. Car. Hi. Hi, Raja. Yes. Um, how are you? I'm better than before. Uh, well, do you remember regarding the car matter? What matter? What car? Uh, the other day, remember, I sold my car to you. Oh, so this is your car key. Okay, what is it about? Um, actually, I sold my car to you because oh. I'm in a financial need. Uh... And you said that it's okay, you'll take my car and you will pay me 20k in return. What? But I haven't received any payment from you yet. I really in need of money, Raja. I, I don't remember saying anything to you about buying your car. And plus it's 20k, that's a lot of cash. Where do I even find one? Uh, but you said that you can't help me. Uh, never will I. I mean, I would help you, but not to buy your car. That's expensive. Uh, Raja, but you have been already having my car for a few uh, days. No, no, <laughs> no. You can't be doing that to me. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do things that I don't even remember making promises for. This case falls under capacity that is one of the elements of Contracts Act 1950. According to Section 11, every person is competent to contract who is of the age of majority according to the law to which he is subject and who is of sound mind and is not disqualified from contracting by any law to which he is subject. Nonetheless, this case falls under Section 12, Clause 1 and 3 where a person is said to be of sound mind for the purpose of making a contract if at the time when he makes it, he is capable of understanding it and of forming a rational judgment as to its effect upon his interest and a person who is usually of sound mind but occasionally of unsound mind may not make a contract when he is of unsound mind. This case can be familiarized by referring to another case law between Ashfaq Qureshi against Aisha Qureshi. A Hindu girl was married to a Muslim man and filed a suit as she was not in her conscious mind of all the ongoing conversation, the nikah ceremony, nor even lived with that man. She was intoxicated at the time of making the contract. It was held that their marriage was declared to be void as she successfully proved all the facts in court by not being in the right position to make the rational judgment in regard of his interests. This can be referred to as Ama was incompetent since he was intoxicated at the time of entering into a contract with Samita.